Hey, I'm Jay Bentroth, founder of License to Distill, and welcome to the start of a new series about bartenders and beekeepers. You already know that License to Distill is all about bartenders, but why beekeepers? What well, actually started four years ago to the day, I was standing right here in this very spot, except this was just an empty field. Now Gin Lane in Montpelier, Vermont is home to our friends at Bar Hill Gin. A gin actually made with raw honey and a spirit company that's committed to giving back to the bees. Why is Bar Hill all about the bees? Let's go in and find out. Ryan Christensen, President and Head Distiller at Caledonia Spirits. We are a craft distillery located in Montpelier, Vermont, focused on supporting agriculture and taking care of the bees. The work of the bees is, is um, it's an incredible exploration of terroir. You know, when we're working with um, beekeepers, you know, we're working with, with only beekeepers in a 250 mile radius of this distillery. Um, so naturally, those bees are traveling from, from their hive, you know, out and around the hive. So they're collecting from all sorts of, you know, flowers and, and fruit orchards and, and anywhere where they can collect nectar. Um, they're literally scraping the earth of terroir. They're, they're grabbing the, the botanicals, uh, the nectars, the pollens, all the flavors of the very land around that hive. Um, and then we're collecting that from the beehive. We're bringing it right here into the distillery. The honey goes in right before bottling. So we put the honey in after we've done our distillation. Our goal when working with honey is not to celebrate the sweetness of honey, we're actually celebrating the botanical essence of honey. So the way that we run our distillation process, we're using loads of juniper. There's an enormous amount of juniper going into our process. Um, the, the juniper oil that we're extracting um, in the distillation process then reveals itself in a very, um, resinous drying characteristic that pairs perfectly with the sweetness in the body of raw honey. Our, our connection to bartenders is everything. You know, our mission depends on uh, the vibrancy of cocktail culture, um, the conversations at bars and restaurants all around the country. So when bartenders share our story, it, it instantly goes all the way back. It ripples back to the hive. We're, we're, we're building networks. You know, we're, we're recognizing that there are beekeepers in every city across America, um, hopefully every city in the world. And if we can find um, bartenders that want to meet these beekeepers and learn more about the importance of bees and um, and if we can learn more about the honey of the cities of America, then we're gonna produce better quality spirits, better quality conversation, and a larger impact. So here you have some big plans for Bar Convent Brooklyn, BCB. What's Bar Hill gonna be doing for BCB this year? So we're really excited about BCB this year. Uh, this is our first year attending. And this year we decided, um, you know, if, if, if there's one thing that our brand can do, it's, it's really create some uh, awareness around the importance of bees and pollinators. Um, so we've partnered with a local beekeeper in New York and we're gonna bring the whole hive. So we're bringing about 40,000 bees. We see the opportunity to bridge the communities of, of farming and bartending. And if we can serve as that bridge and connect those communities and increase the level of awareness, increase the level of curiosity, uh, we think that we can start a conversation that, that um, supports healthier practice at the apiary. We're in New York, not the typical place that you think of 
when you think about beekeeping. We brought some bartenders here, this rooftop spot in the East Village, to teach them a little bit about beekeeping, about the bees. We have an awesome beekeeper here that has a couple of hives right here on this rooftop. They're also gonna get introduced to Ryan. We're gonna taste some gin, we're gonna meet the bees, we're gonna taste some of the honey that the bees have made, and ultimately we're gonna use that honey to have the bartenders make us some cocktails. Zoe Martin. I work at Francie in Brooklyn. I'm the head bartender. So my name is Carlos Viviano. I work at Oshomoco, a Michelin star restaurant in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I am the head bartender. Uh, my name is Marshall and I'm the beverage director here at Valerie. Try the medium. They're just fancy hoodies, so yeah. don't feel too uh, overwhelmed. My name is Nick Hefley. I'm a, an urban beekeeper in New York City and uh, I keep bees all over the five boroughs. All the honey, even in the little bits in the corners and some of these brood frames, um, most all of this honey is coming from our linden trees. If you ever wanted to know what your city or what your town or what your neighborhood uh, tastes like, we can, we can go and see it, we can go and smell it, you can go out and touch your neighborhood, but if you wanted to know what it tastes like, honey is the perfect way to get that. This is a very heavy box. I'm just gonna set right over here. Uh, that box uh, is probably a minimum of about 40 pounds. Right now we're on a nectar flow, meaning there's, there's trees that are blooming. Um, so the bees can fill a box like this in as little as one or two weeks. The honey that the bees make here in New York City is absolutely the best. I'm totally biased, but it's so good. It's floral and citrusy and um, because we have a lot of linden here, we get like a real nice minty aftertaste to it and uh, it's just, it's one of the best honeys you can get. So the brood, uh, th this is a nursery frame. This is where the baby bees are developing. Um, a bee spends their entire uh, childhood, if you will, inside the comb. Uh, and just like a caterpillar uh, feeds and then spins a cocoon and then becomes a butterfly, uh, it's the same process that's happening here, only that caterpillar, which we call a larva here, never leaves the cell. She starts as an egg, she develops inside the cell into a larva. She's fed by all of the worker bees that are attending to her. And then uh, once she gets to the point where she's ready to uh, pupate, the bees cap her cell and she starts to grow all of her adult uh, parts. We have this particular frame has several bees that are starting to emerge. Oh, yeah. So we've got some right here, just starting to make their way out of the comb. And what I can do, if you zoom in on this one, you can give her a little hand. Cool. Wow, wow, that is awesome. So again, she's gonna, she's gonna kinda wander around for a bit to dry out uh, her wings, uh, to, get a, to get her legs under her. And um, as soon as she gets comfortable, she'll start going around and, and cleaning. So being an urban beekeeper is really not so different from being a beekeeper anywhere else. We have a little bit of a different set of difficulties to deal with. Um, most folks who are out in a field with 100 hives don't have to worry about falling off the side of a building, uh, toting honey down ladders. Uh, so the heights are really a big deal when you're working on top of rooftops. Um, the other thing is just our space. So there's not one place in the city where I can put all of my hives. So uh, all of my hives are spread across, you know, uh, seven or eight different locations. Uh, and it takes, there's some logistics involved in moving equipment around, moving bees around, moving honey around. And uh, so those are probably the main differences. But otherwise, uh, we're taking care of the bees the same way as folks in the country. Um, we're dealing with the, most of the same types of pests, although we don't really get bears on our rooftops. Um, and uh, otherwise, we're working with the same equipment. It's uh, very similar. This is absolutely a jar of New York City honey. Um, this honey comes from uh, all of our hives around the city. We don't differentiate between different spaces, even though we could, uh, just because we don't have, you know, a thousand hives around the city. We have maybe 
50 or 60 hives around the city. Uh, we have one small honey room and we're dealing with small spaces. So uh, all of our honey goes together, but you're getting a little bit of the whole city in every jar, which is pretty cool. We're at this gorgeous bar, Valerie in Midtown. We brought our bartenders, we brought our beekeeper, we brought our head distiller, we brought our honey, and of course we brought the Bar Hill Gin, and now we're ready to make some cocktails. Uh, our cocktail is a Bar Hill Swizzle uh, with uh, fresh basil, lime, local honey, green chartreuse, and Bar Hill Gin. Utilizing the honey and the body and the roundness that Bar Hill provides. Uh, topped with fresh watermelon juice and aromatized uh, basil brand. So I did a twist on a bee's knees. Um, I infused chamomile with lavender, let it sit in the honey, three quarters of lemon juice, a Bar Hill gin, half an ounce of our Tomcat gin with pitch bitters, shaken on a beautiful coupe glass with a dehydrated lemon and a chamomile flower. This is a, a bramble, it's a red kind of bramble with Bar Hill gin, blackberry syrup, honey, uh, lemon juice and some Lovage tincture. Supporting local agriculture is so important. After learning what bees do and how they affect the local uh, environment, I am definitely going to be start using a lot of more local ingredients. There are a lot of causes out there that uh, want to save the bees, want to do stuff for honeybees, uh, but I don't think those causes always get it right. Uh, this initiative to plant all this pollinator forage uh, really covers a lot more than just honeybees, you know? It's doing something for all the pollinators. Welcome to Bar Convent Brooklyn, also known as BCB. This is where pioneers of the bar and beverage community gather to celebrate and push the boundaries of liquid culture through education. We're here with the team from Bar Hill Gin, who in partnership with BCB is offsetting all 73,000 square feet of this event by planting and maintaining 73,000 square feet of pollinator habitat. So let's head over to the Bar Hill booth and see what the buzz is all about. Without gin, you don't have vibrancy in cocktail culture. Gin is so essential to the history of the cocktail. Um, similarly, our process um, is such an opportunity for agriculture. So if we can bring fans into Montpelier, Vermont, onto Gin Lane, into this distillery, and connect them to our process all the way from raw honey to the bee's knees, um, it, it's a great journey for everyone. <music> Distillation, you know, any, any distillery, the process inside um, presents an enormous opportunity for agriculture. You know, when you think about the volume of materials that go through a relatively small still like Phyllis, the one behind me, um, you know, any, any still is a very hungry piece of equipment and has an enormous appetite. So when you think about partnering with farmers and the struggles that a farmer goes through, um, so long as you can pay a fair price to that farmer, you can provide a livelihood to the farmer. And that's what distillation is all about. We're here to take the crops, take the raw honey, take the, the, the apples, the, the grains, the sugar cane, whatever agricultural material the distillery is working with, preserve it, give it shelf life, add value, and make sure that value goes back to the farm. Shining the spotlight on bartenders and beekeepers doesn't stop here. We're taking the series on the road all across the United States with our friends at Bar Hill Gin. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for our next episode.